you've heard me talk about it, and Alan, because I'm uh, lucky enough to sell history books that people are kind enough to be reading. But I notice when I go out and talk about them, there seems to be a war on history. And sure enough, that is the name of the book that we have now out that we're going to talk about, The War on History. Uh, how the left is dismantling history, uh, American identity to establish a Marxist utopia. And it is scary uh, what is out there and why you need to read this book, because most of the people that listen to our show are extremely patriotic and very cognizant of our history. Even if you don't know every detail of it, you're prideful of it. and You should be. But now there's a war on it. And we saw it yesterday in Columbus Day. Most people are don't even talk about Columbus Day outside Governor Cuomo, who's Italian, and said this is our day. Columbus, obviously Italian, who got his financing from Spain in order to make history. But it's what he did after making history is who has the rest of the world walking away from him 500 years later. But they're not stopping there. They're going after the Confederate statues. They're not stopping there. They're going after Jefferson and William and Mary. I went to William and Mary where Jefferson went to college. You barely have a you barely see anything about Jefferson there. At the University of Virginia, they're protesting Jefferson's presence. He invented the school. If you don't like Jefferson, don't go to the University of Virginia. That's what I always thought. Jared Stepman's figured it all out. It's all in his book. Jared, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Jared, this is one of the most important books written today. And you just break down who these people are in our past. Not because they're perfect, because they're impactful for a reason. First off, when did this whole movement to debunk our history start? You know, I think it's been a long-term process that's been growing over time that unfortunately has only gotten worse. I think especially uh, especially in American educational system, I mean, something I talk a lot about in my book is uh, one book rec- uh, was written in 1980 called The People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn, who was a far-left historian who I, I think wrote a particularly bad ideological history uh, that frankly has gone through a lot of our schools. A lot of young Americans have read his books because of their teachers, because of the K-12 education that unfortunately uh, has been infiltrated by this kind of history and turned Americans against their past, turned Americans against the, the founding of this country. I think that's really where this stems from. So now you have uh, young people who say that they don't like uh, they don't like Christopher Columbus. They don't really know much maybe about the founders. They don't really respect uh, what the founders did in, in creating uh, the United States. And so I think this has been a long-term buildup that has only unfortunately got worse in recent years where we literally have statues that are coming under attack uh, vandalism. Uh, Columbus Day especially, and you open up on Columbus. You don't say that all these people are perfect, but nobody's perfect. People listening right now aren't perfect. They're people of their times. And you try to put into context. Let's begin with what was yesterday, Columbus Day. The uh, Columbus. Put in perspective what made this guy special. Well, uh, Christopher Columbus, and it, it is incredible, we just had the D.C. City Council that abolished Columbus Day and had a special meeting in, in the District of Columbia, our nation's capital, named after Columbus. Uh, there's a reason why the founders admired Christopher Columbus. He was a man who, of course, uh, he was an Italian man who got funding from a uh, Spanish sovereign to make an adventure out into the Atlantic. He thought he was going to find uh, Asia because a lot of the trade routes at the time had been cut off through the Middle East. Uh, and made a bold two-month voyage out into the Atlantic in three small ships, I mean, barely 40 feet long. I don't think people uh, understand uh, quite how tiny the ships that he sailed in when he made that incredible journey over two months. He had a crew that was often uh, worried and mutinous. He he really had to deal with a whole lot during this journey, including incredible storms, and eventually made the discovery at San Salvador that, that to really transform human civilization and, and uh, discovering the new world and, and, of course, all the migrations that came thereafter. Uh, talk about boldness and daring for, for a man who really didn't know what he was going to encounter out in those oceans. I can only imagine. I mean, we today, we have such an interconnected world that the map of the world is so laid out. You can imagine, though, 500 years ago, how terrifying that experience must have been. And, of course, what he did ultimately opened up the new world and really laid the seeds for what would become many civilizations in the new world, including the United States. So what people have to understand, too, there was war there war in religion with Christianity and, and Islam, believe it or not, as is today. Uh, it was a death struggle. You know, it was a power struggle. And then when you are Columbus and you come across a whole new civilization, people have focused on how he treated them. But 
what there's what you also should recognize is what he did in getting there and how he changed the world. Absolutely. I think it, and there is some unfortunate, I think, bad history about Columbus uh, being mistreating toward the natives. I think actually, strangely enough, yeah, many of the Spanish who followed Columbus did. Columbus himself actually uh, went after some of his crews who were mistreating the natives. Now, Columbus himself uh, never did. In fact, he was very insistent on not doing that. And uh, he got chastised by many of the Spanish for being too hard on the Spanish, uh, which is part of the reason why uh, he was uh, he was a lot of political enemies in his own day uh, weren't, to, weren't too in favor of him. I think it's kind of a, an irony of history that Columbus is blamed for these things. Not that Columbus himself, of course, was, was entirely perfect, and we really shouldn't view people in the past as you know having that standards of perfection that, of course, we can't uphold either. Uh, but, of course, what he did was a transformational event in world history. I mean, we talk about one of the greatest explorers in the last, I mean, thousand years. Uh, Columbus, without what he did, I mean, there would really be no America today. And I think that that's something that, you know, when we really talk about this kind of history, you know, you don't need to have uh, figures from the past be perfect or pull the standards of 2019 to say that they did something great, something that's still worth today right. respecting and admiring. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, now uh, don't think that's the case, which is why they want to tear down his statues, where they want to get rid of his day. And, and by the way, what you did is, if for people that want to uh, back up our history and support our history, you got to pick up your book because you give reasons why. You say, he, here's who these people are. I'm reading about the Columbus section in your book, and then you bring up Samuel Morse, whose image still stands in Central Park. You write, the famed inventor of the telegraph changed the world, no question. He also wrote angry nativist screeds against Catholics and Catholic immigrants. Nobody calls for his statue to be removed or replaced with one of Columbus. America has room for many heroes. It's a more tolerant age, you write. So there's a problem with uh, Lindbergh. Evidently, he was a he, he thought in Hitler was a positive. Does it mean that he wasn't that didn't do the first transatlantic flight? So Morse obviously has some issues. There was a lot of anti-Catholic, anti-Italian sentiment uh, in America at one some time, right? There hundred percent was. In fact, the real war against Columbus Day it happened also in the early twentieth century. That the Ku Klux Klan, in particular, did not like a Columbus. They thought he represented a Italian immigrants. Wait, he the KKK, the KKK the Ku Ku did not Klan. like Columbus. They did not like Columbus. In fact, they tried to stop uh, the celebration of Columbus Day, which is kind of ironic that here we are in 2019, and, and there's now a new movement trying to stop them as well. Uh, this is a one time something that was pushed by the Ku Klux Klan around the country. Now, fortunately, I think Americans as a whole were much wiser. They decided that Columbus was absolutely worth celebrating. It wasn't just you know Italian Americans who can celebrate him; it was all Americans. And to me, that's kind of why Columbus is so great. You know, you don't need to go down and tear the statue of somebody else down we can be inclusive and bring more heroes into the american pantheon so jared what do you say to people who find the confederate statues insulting you know, I think to a large extent, first of all, I think it is important to preserve the history that we have. It's important to understand those in the past, even even those we disagree with. And I think a lot of the history around uh, Confederate statues is very complicated. But at the end of the day, I don't think we're going to end racism by, by tearing down statues. I ultimately don't think that's the case. I mean, I advocate uh, building more statues, building more statues to those like uh, Frederick Douglass, who was a, a great hero and an, and an abolitionist. Uh, uh, a man who was an escaped slave who really became an apostle of freedom. Uh, to me, uh, that's, a more, that's a more healthy way for society to deal with this than simply to find statues. And many of these statues are, frankly, they're not for the glorification of the Confederacy. Some, like one that was torn down in Atlanta, was actually a peace statue, even though they called it a Confederate statue. So unfortunately, I think there have been a lot of misguided attacks on statues where people don't understand the meaning. And I think at the same time, we don't really do ourselves any good by simply tearing down any history that, that makes us uncomfortable or we don't like. I think that ultimately makes us a less informed society and a less Look, I think the past needs to be seen in all its complexities because we're going to have right. to deal with complexities in our own time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were looking for our own history. We made it. Now we're attacking it. Uh, Jared Stedman, thanks so much. Congratulations on writing the book, The War in History. It's a must read. Really important. Well-researched. Thanks, Jared.